and, and throughout our business are able to show us as well. Um, one of the things that we have found to be very useful is a little bit of friendly competition. So we can observe what others are doing. I can then network with them, find out the details, find out who they partnered with, and so on. So we've been able to um, reduce our carbon footprint significantly over the past couple of years. Our target is to reduce our footprint by 20% in absolute terms by 2012. And one of the things we looked closely at was what other companies had set as their target. We chose not to normalize our, our goal. We wanted to do it in absolute terms. And we've been adding solar to a lot of our facilities because we're in that business. As you can see, we've, we've purchased over uh, 30 million kilowatt hours annually of green energy from some of our local utilities. And um, we are also now starting to install some of the PV modules that are made on our equipment by our customers. And very importantly, um, we try to advocate for policies, rules, legislation worldwide that we also think support what we want to do as a company and what we hope other companies will be doing. So just a couple of, of notable examples um, I wanted to leave you with. Um, on our main R&D campus in Sunnyvale, California, we in installed a two megawatt solar installation a couple of years ago. It includes both a megawatt on the rooftop, two large buildings, and we have another megawatt on these awnings that you can see in the photo here that sits over our car park. And we're generating over 4,000 megawatt hours annually, one of the largest systems in California and it's generating significant savings on an annual basis in our energy costs. But very importantly, we elected to put this installation in place because we wanted to demonstrate our commitment to photovoltaic as a technology and to demonstrate our commitment to reducing our carbon footprint. So although this project does not have an ROI that compares to some of the other projects we've done, we really felt that it was the right thing to do. So, what I'm trying to leave you with is the notion that there are many types of motivating factors in, in certain cases for projects like this. Now, I mentioned friendly competition before. Interesting story about this particular project. When we elected to plan it and size it, um, our CEO, who was seen in the photo there with Governor Schwarzenegger, came to us and said, I really don't care how large you can make it. Please make it as large as you possibly can, but I want you to make it larger than Google down the road. <laughs> uh, Google has a 1.6 megawatt system, so we set out to make ours larger. Another project which we just completed that we're really proud of is we built a new factory in Singapore, and we elected to put this project under the Building and Construction Authority Green Mark Program. It's essentially an analog to the LEED um, building criteria. And this building is certified as a platinum or the highest level. And it will save approximately a third of the energy that would be required for a similar building. will save over a million dollars a year in energy costs. And in, in simple payback terms, it will pay itself back the investment we made in uh, a little more than three years. So it's a fantastic project. We have rainwater harvesting. We have a living uh, green wall um, in one of the employee areas. We have 380 kilowatts of solar on the building. We have daylighting throughout um, virtually every feature you could possibly think of. So it's a real showcase for us. I mentioned before our goal, um, just to again um, indicate when we felt we were ready to set targets, we wanted to make them as aggressive as we could. We didn't want to make them unreachable, but I think one of the keys when you get to the point of pledging to Sustainable Waterloo or a similar type of organization um, is to look hard at what others are doing, to understand your own operations, and then to set a target that will stretch yourself a little bit beyond the point where you know you can get there right now. And frankly, in the latter stages of this challenge, we're still looking very hard for ways to get there. So let me just close with a, a few reflections on sustainable Silicon Valley and uh, collaboration. Uh, we definitely believe that collective action is extraordinarily powerful. We can accomplish a tremendous amount. Jennifer described some of the wonderful things that SSB has done. There is definitely a multiplier.
multiplier effect and having an effective network in place. We are inspired by what our collaborators are doing. It's a source of ideas, as, as I mentioned. Um, we can copy things in some cases. We can certainly adapt in most. There's a little bit of friendly competition going on. And I think the really interesting thing we've been doing of late is planning together, looking at regional issues, regional systems, such as our water distribution and water quality network. We can also report collectively to get greater leverage. And then last but not least, you can always commiserate with one another because there will be times along the, the, the path towards greening your enterprise where you're going to find it's not so easy and where it seems like you're moving mountains. And so what you'll find is there are many others confronting the same challenges and sometimes that can just be what you need to get you past that particular point in time. So I, I really think that in sustainability, it is very important for collaboration. And we have found that the best network is one that's not just business oriented, but includes government and non-governmental organizations as well. Um, every time I go to an FSB event, I meet with really interesting people working on new products, new services, new endeavors, um, and I can come back to the office with some new ideas I can think about. So again, congratulations to all of you there, and I hope the uh, rest of your evening is, is very pleasurable, and I wish you much success in the future. So as we talk about organizations in sustainable Silicon Valley, and we talk about our own members, Intermodal and the City of Waterloo, the question comes to mind, this is what's happened in the past. What's going to happen in the future? So I'd like to welcome Mike Morris back to the stage now to provide you with a look for exactly that. <laughs> Terrific, Mike. So Lisa, we started off the night 20 minutes late, and we're pretty much back on time. So Lisa knows what she's doing, I think. Um, I'm going to be really brief here um, and speak to, as uh, Lisa had, had, had said, kind of where we're going, and then also do some recognition. This is an evening of, of recognition, not just for our membership, but for some other folks that have been a part of this, uh, and so hopefully we'll get to that in just a few. So to talk about where we're going, I think it's important to look back just a bit, and we do this in the report uh, on pages three and four. I'm, I'm gra graciously provided with a few pages to talk about our kind of, kind of story over the past few, few years. Um, and I think we've done a lot in a short period of time. So I'm going to talk through that from this slide, from left to right. And hopefully you see we've done more than just maintain an affinity for wind turbines and move to color printing, I guess. Um, but it was in April 2008 that we finished our first independent study under the supervision of Dr. Barry Col Colbert, uh, where we looked at carbon emission policy. And we came up with a, a report that said, it was actually called A Community Stands Up. Um, and it's, it looked at how we as a community could come together to collaboratively work towards becoming more environmentally sus sustainable, which I think we're on the path towards. In July of 2008, we, we incorporated the organization. And one of the very first things we did was set up a volunteer team. And this is a picture on our team, of, of our team there. Um, it was one of the smartest things we did from, from the very start. In particular, Jody, who's sitting down at the front, you probably can't see him, and Joanna Lafleur with the blonde hair almost on the left there, they've both been a part of the organization since the very start, uh, which I think is really very uh, 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 special. Uh, in April of 2009, we then completed the carbon reduction framework process that Anna um, um, Marie talked about, where we brought 22 organizations together to tell us what the carbon reduction framework should actually be. Um, and that process went really well. This is a picture of the group there at the end of that. Um, by May, the funding had come together from a mix of founding partners and grantors, many of which are in the room here. This is a picture of our founding partners uh, at that time. In June of last year, many of you know, we launched the Regional Carbon Initiative with three pledging partners that participated from the very start. Um, and now we, here we are with our first end of year report, able to come back to the community and say, hey, look, you know, this is what's actually been, been done. Um, and so I'd also encourage you to read page 27 of the report. This is where David Rowade from the, from the region of Waterloo um, allows us to think about